Start tonight's meeting and I'm gonna use two microphones because you know what's better than one microphone turned on? Two. Okay, as is customary, we're gonna start with the Pledge of Allegiance, so let's please stand and recite the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, we just have some, I'm gonna review some standards of conduct here. Um, but first of all, if you parked, uh, if, you've, if you parked underneath the library, there's underground parking there. Our staff, who would you please raise your hands in staff? If you did park there, we have free parking. So you can park there for free this evening. Um, we'd just like to welcome you and just uh, let everyone know this is an opportunity and a safe space for everybody to come and present and speak for two minutes to the city council on issues that you think are facing our city. Um, but also, we would ask that you be respectful, respectful of other people's comments. Avoid cheering or jeering, as it could cause someone to feel intimidated. Please also help to take care of this historic meeting room by not standing on the furniture or leaning against decorative pieces. If you have a, nobody has a sign or prop here, so I'm gonna skip that. Please do not approach the dais. If you have something to pass out, the council staff members can help you uh, and assist you. So, we're gonna jump right in, and I'm looking for approval of the meeting, the meeting minutes for Tuesday, February 5th, 2019, and Tuesday, February 19th, 2019. So moved. Second. Uh, motion by Council Member Fowler and second by Council Member Johnston. All those in favor? Aye. Aye, Aye. and that motion carries. We don't have any public hearings tonight, so we're moving on to potential action items, which is the first one in ordinance for budget amendment number three for fiscal year 2018-19. And there's some motion sheets if you want to look at that, Council Members. I'll make a motion, Mr. Chair. I okay. move that the council adopt an ordinance amending the fiscal year 2018-19 final budget of Salt Lake City as proposed by the administration. Second. second. That was great. Council Member Mendenhall has made a motion and a second by Council Member Luke. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 That carries. Now we're moving on to the comments section. Uh, questions to the mayor from the city council. Um, and I have the sheet here that I'm gonna hand over to, or do you already have them? You've got them. So I don't know if you want us to go over each one. We still have some remaining items from back on February 5th. Uh, the golf, uh, well I can go through February 5th if you'd like and then we can move on by the date, but uh, February 5th is the survey error on exchange place property appraisal. And on the follow up during the night, February 19th meeting, Mr. Litvak indicated that they were reviewing this with the city attorney's office. Any movement on that? Uh, Council member, we are still waiting to hear back from the attorney's office on that. Okay, how about on the impact fee plan? Um, we have um, we've provided, I know the mayor met with uh, the chair uh, of the council on the impact fee and then we also provided uh, an update to council staff uh, last week. Um, we are working right now on, um, we have noticed um, the impact fee uh, plan amendment uh, for those issues that uh, where there's agreement between the council and the administration on the low hanging fruit. Um, this was also the day before the, um, and then on the Northwest Quadrant, we feel there is an opportunity to um, have some conversations with the council on what we would like to do uh, there together. So I guess the question is when will amendment to the plan be ready for review and council action? Um, we're working on a timeline. Okay, yeah, as soon as, as possible as we can get this. Uh, the other question, is what is the status of the transmittal to discuss avoiding a general fund subsidy of the golf fund? Uh, I don't know that we're uh, sending a transmittal to avoid a general fund subsidy. We're, uh, we are sending a transmittal over to talk about the golf fund and the status on the up, uh, updates, what's going on in golf and uh, what we see the, as the path forward. How soon might we see those, <clears throat> that transmittal? You know, uh, I've seen a draft of it. I think it'll be coming uh, pretty quickly. Uh, I can get back to you on time frame though. Okay, that's great. Uh, if we jump to February 19th, uh, it's the Comprehensive Administrative Review on Funding Requests. 
I'll re read the question. Will the administration incorporate a practice that all funding requests from the administration include an administrative analysis to include feedback from the city attorney, finance department, and relevant city departments? For any capital funding requests through either the general fund or RDA, could the administration incorporate a practice for the city's impact fee consultant to review the item and, and identified and now any opportunity for the use of impact fees as a funding resource? So uh, I think we welcome these suggestions and the answer is yes, we are um, incorporating these suggestions into how we do business, so thank you. Okay, and then this is just a, a reminder for future conversations about uh, several council members received a presentation this afternoon about the development opportunities. So we're just wondering, uh, during the meeting we discussed the mayor's staff, the need to hear whether the mayor is in support of moving forward with future conversations. I think we spoke today that we'd be getting back to you tomorrow on that, so thank you and thanks for the meeting today. Great. Uh, here, so there was a statement last week and public statements made yesterday that Mayor Biskupski referred to efforts to fight against the Inland Port legislation. Uh, me in particular, but we were wondering what those efforts include. And I don't have a statement for you tonight on those. Okay, so we'll just carry these over to the next meeting until we get more answers. Great. Um, I'm going to turn the time over to Charlie Luke. Do we want to have uh, public um, or questions of the council? Yes, let's first do that question. first. Do we have any questions to the city council on D2? Any cards? <clears throat> oh, no, you're great. Lily White, come on up. You've got two minutes. When does my time start? Now. now. All right, so my name is Lily White, and I live on 9th South and 3rd West, more specifically 911 South, Gale Street, and I come here in response to, I have a claim on a major city problem. Number one, is it health? Is it, it is affecting the livelihood and happiness of my family? I currently live next to Big O Tires, and every single effort I have made to make civil, agreements and, um, sorry, civil agreements and uh, mutual agreements with the business have been met only with immaturity and the police being called on me and my mother. Um, as And I have also been sent to the city. I've talked to zoning, I've talked to engineering, I've talked to the RDA, as well as the city, county, and state health departments. Nothing has been gone through, everything. Um, we suffer from air pollution, and through my research, it is a civil right for us to have unpolluted air. Therefore, I am coming to the city council to ask for any legal advice or just stating my problem. Um, as the entire city that I've been talking to for weeks on end have no answers for me. Um, I think this is it. Thank you, Ms. White. You know, this is, uh, we've got your information, and I think this is in District 4, so District 5. So what we need to do is uh, get your information to staff, and then they can work with the administration in figuring out a meeting schedule that you could get set up with Council Member Mendenhall, who I know would be happy to meet with you, as well as staff and city staff to, to go over your concerns. All right, thank you. Yep. Does that sound good, Council Member Mendenhall? Yeah. Great. So I'm going to turn the time over to Council Chair Charlie Luke. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, unfortunately, I'm in a, in a um, we're we're in a position where uh, I need to read a letter in response uh, to an issue uh, that was made public yesterday. Uh, so I will do that. Uh, this is dated March 5th, 2019. Mayor Biskupski recently called into question the integrity and ethics of Cindy Gus Jensen, the council office's executive director, who has devoted more than 30 years of service to Salt Lake City. Cindy oversees the council office staff and is responsible for implementing the policy direction given by the council. In her role, Cindy works for and answers to the council, not the other way around. The council decided it was in the city's best interest to continue to negotiate with the state about inland port legislation. The council decided that we, would do, that we would do the hard work of representing Salt Lake City residents and businesses rather than wash our hands of the difficult task. The council made those calls because we know it's our job as elected officials to actually engage in difficult conversations and negotiations when the city's interests are on the line. 
And we were able to make it, and we were able to make those decisions with confidence because we knew we had a thorough, competent, prin principled executive director leading a staff who would do the who would do the complicated work. The fact that Cindy has remained a fixture of city government as dozens of council members and half a dozen mayors have come and gone is a testament to her experience and professionalism. As a consummate professional, Cindy has never and would never try to personally benefit from her role. It is irresponsible and hurtful for Mayor Biskupski to suggest otherwise. We stand emphatically with Cindy and ask the mayor to apologize for making an incorrect public accusation against a rec respected city attorney. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Yep. Thank you, Council Chair Luke. We're on to item E1, which is new business and ordinance consolidated fee schedule, um, which is in your motion sheets. And this, can, this is the council will consider adopting an ordinance amending terminal use fees on the Salt Lake City consolidated fee schedule. The amendments include fees for conducting peer-to-peer -peer rental car operations uh, at airports owned and operated by Salt Lake City. Madam Mr. Chair, I move the council adopt the ordinance amending, uh, council adopts the ordinance amending the con consolidated fee schedule, including fees for conducting peer-to-peer -peer rental car operations at airports owned and operated by Salt Lake City. Uh, Mr. Chair, I would move a substitute motion. Uh, I move that we, um, uh, that we table uh, the consolidated fee schedule uh, issue um, at this time. There's been a substitute motion to Council Member uh, uh, Johnston's motion made by Council Chair Charlie Luke and a second by Council Member Fowler. Uh, is there any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 And that motion passes. We're on to uh, F1, which is unfinished, unfinished business, which is an ordinance for car sharing ordinance amendments. Mr. Chair, I move that the Council adopts an ordinance amending Title 16 related to motor vehicle operation and violation, penalty and enforcement and specifying that the ordinance would become effective in 90 days. Motion by Council Member Luke and second by Council Member Fowler. Any discussion? Um, during, the, during this next 90 days, I um, would strongly encourage uh, uh, car or peer-to-peer -peer car sharing companies and the rental car industry uh, and other parties interested to uh, work closely with Salt Lake City and the airport uh, to develop a path forward uh, to legalize peer-to-peer -peer, uh, car sharing operations uh, at the Salt Lake City International Airport. All those in favor? Aye. 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 And that, mo that motion carries. We're on to item number two, which is an ordinance for the Central Business Improvement Area 2019 designation. Mr. Chair, I'd be happy to make that motion. I move that the council accept and adopt the findings and recommendation of the board. I'm sorry, am I on the wrong one? No, no, I feel like that's I right. shuffled too far there. Yeah. <laughs> F2? Yep. I move that the council accept and adopt the findings and recommendation of the Board of Equalization for the Central Business Improvement Assessment Area number DA hyphen CBIA hyphen one nine and adopt the assessment ordinance for that assessment area, including confirming and adopting the assessment list and levying the assessment. Second. Motion by Council Member Mendenhall. Second. Oh, a second by Council Member Wharton. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 And that motion carries. We're on to item F3, which is a resolution for, calls, for council policy manual updates. Mr. Chair, I move that the council adopt a resolution replacing sections A.48 uh, and A.49 of the City Council Policy Manual with a new section A.48 relating to city electronic devices and services. Second. Motion by Council Member Wharton and second by Council Member Johnston. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. And that motion carries. We're on to the consent agenda. So move, or I move to approve the items on the consent agenda. Second. Or do we want to approve item number four in the consent agenda as well? Um, hold on, and I'll tell you. It's, isn't it just, That's setting, just setting the date? The date. So, yes. yeah. Yeah. Great. Um, motion by Council Member Wharton, and I'm sorry, who was the second? Council Member Johnston. Any discussion? 
All those in favor? Aye. 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 And that motion carries. And that is the end of our meeting this evening.